So let's do an unboxing of a Titan RTX that NVIDIA was kind enough to provide to me. If you remember from a previous video where I talked about how to install all the drivers necessary for one of these, I used the cloud because I didn't have the actual hardware. So in a previous video, I basically asked NVIDIA for help. Let me show you a clip from that video. Also, can't resist trying since I am not doing this on native hardware. If anybody from NVIDIA is watching and would like to provide me with some native hardware to try this out, I'd be glad to do a video completely on that. Definitely, let's talk. And NVIDIA delivered. So we have a Titan RTX. This is pretty much a top of the line GPU for gaming or for data science, machine learning, like I'm going to be using this for. I'm going to have a series of videos coming out where I build an entire computer system around this card, and you'll see some of the hardware decisions that I made on this and how this differs from a gaming computer. Now, unboxing alone is kind of boring, so I am going to talk really about what it takes to have a beast like this of a graphics card inside of your computer and what you'd want to consider if you're building one. I'll have a much more in-depth video on the actual build. Looking at if you were to add this to an existing system, what does this really entail? So if you just look on the box for this thing, it tells you that you need a 650 watt or greater power supply and you need two PCIe Express power connectors. We'll see what that looks like in a second. And then of course you need the, the necessary PCIe slot to actually put this in to on your, on your motherboard. Let's quickly look at the specs for this video card. You can see it here on the NVIDIA website. And if we look at the high level specs to this, we'll get more into the weeds with these specs when I do some benchmarks with this graphics card. You can see it's based on the Turin architecture. It's got a frame buffer, this is very important, of 24 gigabytes. These 24 gigabytes let you load the training set completely into the video card. That's very important. If you can't do that, that degrades on your performance. So some of these lower budget graphics cards, this is where you'll really see the performance drop off is you just won't have as much memory. The clock speed, 1.7 gigahertz, doesn't seem like much by computer standards, but this is the whole thing of having 576 tensor cores and 4600 CUDA cores all working on that. So you've got a bunch of weaker relative to CPUs, workers all carrying out the tasks that you wanted to do. Static electricity is also a big consideration when you're building a machine. I've read a lot of things as far as using gloves, using wristbands that, that ground you, various things like that. The approach that I've always used and has worked well for me has been just to have the power supply plugged in and I touch it since it's grounded and that will discharge any static electricity from me into the ground. Obviously don't make, make sure that you're not touching live current when you touch something that is grounded. So looking at this, there's just... All right, and here we have the graphics, graphics card. It's got dual fans. It's got the PCIe slot to plug it into. Dual slot, obviously. Most of these cards have this kind of thing. Okay, and there we have it. So what I'll probably be visible from my case when I put it into there will be that profile of it where you'll have the Titan displayed. Really what goes into this, you have to connect it to your motherboard. It has the SLI connector on this as well, which I will not be using. I will be doing this in a single GPU configuration. You'll want to put it into your motherboard into one of these these slots that you have here. Since it's double, you can see that there's M2. These are essentially where I'll put the SSD hard drive. M2 is the kind of stick-shaped hard drive that, that mounts very close right to the motherboard. That's the type that I will be using. You'll see that get put in on the, the video where I actually build this thing. And you essentially just snap it in right like that and it locks in. The other important thing to connect for this are these. These are the little power adapters that require 
essentially two cables coming in from the, the power supply. I'm using a Corsair 1000 watt power supply. This is more power than this needs, but this will give me this will give me some room to, to figure that out. You need at least 650, so I have put GPUs into off-the-shelf sort of Dells that I bought in various things. I have upgraded the, the power supply before. You just need to make sure that it fits. They give you most of the measurements there. If you're building something, you can use PC Part Picker. That's the one that I usually work with. It tells you the wattage for what you're installing. Now, these little cables, they're eight pin essentially for this and you need two of them. It takes a lot of power to run this thing. You can see that basically they, the, each of these cables actually provides two of these. So I've got, I could easily do dual GPU with this. There is one of these pins that is shaped a little bit differently. And that is how you're able to make sure that you don't accidentally plug the power in wrong, which would be probably catastrophic. So there we have one. And I can clearly feel that these do not fit if I try to put them into the wrong spot, which is good. And you put these and they click into there. And that's essentially somewhat in bench mode. I don't have anything plugged in here. But that is what you what you'll see when you try to install this kind of a graphics card into something. Now this is a fully modular power supply. So these are all the potential connectors that I can put into here. And I've essentially got from Coursera a bag of the other types of adapters that I would want to put into this type of a GPU. All right, there is the unboxing of a Titan RTX. Thank you again to NVIDIA for providing me with this. I plan to put it to very, very good use with machine learning and neural networks. We're going to be using both some TensorFlow, PyTorch, some Rapids as well, just to see how you can use this type of a GPU on a larger machine build and get great results from it. So definitely check out my next video on this, which will cover how to do a build with this type of machine and some of the considerations that you would take for building a machine learning workstation. One in about the $5,000 range, but then also looking how you might want to scale that back to a couple thousand, depending on if you want to use this extreme of a GPU or maybe even scale that back a little bit. We'll talk about that as well. And then the software side, once we've got this beast of a machine built, how do we get the actual hardware drivers for something like a Titan RTX installed in a way that the system can be used in a very efficient way? If you're interested in this kind of thing with artificial intelligence, machine learning, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.